Jim Fidak. I am the executive director of Master's Table Community Meals, located out of Insonia, Connecticut. I'm here at Assumption Church Hall, uh, preparing for our meal for February 26, 2023. So I'm, I'm Mark Riccio, I live in Monroe, and I've been uh, the assistant chef here at Master's Table for 12 years since the inception. So today for our February meal, we're doing uh, chicken patties in the oven with a splash of red sauce, kind of make it like a Parmesan. And we have a ziti on the side to go with it, along with a cup of pudding for dessert. And we're gonna make uh, 200 meals today for our guests. It's takeout only. We, we do not serve in person yet since the pandemic. So unfortunately, when it goes, it goes. We may have some left over or we may run out which we hate to do, but we're not equipped to do more than uh, 200 meals at a time, unfortunately. Hey, Mark. How's it going? Good, how are you? All right. Don't make me lose count. I got to count. Jeanette's going to get mad if I mess up the count. Yes, you will. So, basically, you were asking how we start, how this became a reality in some ways. So, I lived in Florida for 11 years, and I'm sure Mark said it because he knows the whole story. I volunteered at some soup kitchens, community meals, and really enjoyed it. And felt there was a need for it up here in the Valley area at the time. Um, I mean, I was, I was pretty clueless. I just know it was a thought or God put in my mind to do something about it. Um, and Mark has been since the beginning our first meeting was actually in Shelton. I mean, I, we didn't even know how to run a meeting. Uh, no, we didn't. Meeting, you know, and it was like, well, I know him. Hey, why don't you become a board member? Uh, one of our good friends, Russ, he became a board member. And Russ in turn said, I got a father who likes to give back and he's a great cook. Oh, we got a cook. So it was, it, it was um, to say the least interesting in the beginning how we got people together, how this all came about. Um, we, as Mark probably stated again, I, I'm sure I keep saying that because Mark knows so much about our history um, because he's part of it. Uh, we started at Christ Church and originally it was set to do one meal the fourth Sunday of each month. We thought people could use the meal who most need of the meal, I should say, uh, would benefit from it at the end of the month. Maybe the food stamps were running low, maybe the funding was running low. They get a meal, they get through the month, and then they're, uh, they get their benefits or the food stamps for the following month, shortly thereafter, I should say. Um, did you tell them about how we went to two meals? Yes, I did. Okay. When we moved from uh, Christ Church to Assumption seven, eight years ago, yes, okay. I did. Okay. Let me, let me talk about Mark here. Mark is the type of person who, who puts every effort into everything he does. He, he is willing to help out, do anything. I mean, Mark does double duty. Um, Except I don't do dishes. He couldn't boil it's water. It's not like a all. You couldn't boil water when we first had him, but no, Vinny no, Laraca, our head chef, taught him well, and now he's running a meal. Look at this. He's getting a chicken, putting on the tray, putting it in the oven. As long as my back doesn't go out. But Mark is a, they're all asset, they're the whole board. Um, it's nice to learn how to cook and help people at the same time, so in this instance, everybody wins. And we like when everybody wins. We don't want anybody to lose. That's right. That's right. It, and the most important thing to really to take from what we're talking about here is it's not about us. I mean, this story is about Master's Table. But this whole ministry, this whole meal, it's about serving other people. It's not about us. Yes, we like to get a, maybe a compliment. Oh, the meal was good or, or thank you. That's all great and done. But our, our real meaning behind this is to serve people give people a good meal before you know they were coming in they were 
going, uh, they were um, interacting with each other. Unfortunately, we're, we're still not letting people in to sit down and eat because of the pandemic. I'm sure you mentioned that, Mark. I did, yep. Um, but this is about serving other people. This is a, a, about doing that. We don't call people, uh, people that we serve, we call them guests. Because they're, they're guests at our, our, our dinner or our meal. Um, so it's about them. And, oh. We'll let you not worry about that. Yeah. Um, we, um, where was I going with this now? Yes. Our, yes, our guests, it's about them. And we don't call ourselves a soup kitchen. Um, a lot of people look at this, even though I volunteered at soup kitchens in Florida, and I really did enjoy helping people and, and serving people. We consider this more of a community meal. Um, and the reason why we say it's a community meal, because we feel it's a little more upgraded than, than, than a soup kitchen. As you'll see later, we offer things for people on our giveaway tables. We offer uh, blood pressure screenings, which someone will be here today. So now we're in a holding pattern. The sauce is coming up to temperature, and we, all, we only have room for four trays here. So we have four trays of chicken, but I'm gonna set up the fifth tray. So when these are done, the others can go in, and then we'll leave everything in the warmer. And when the volunteers get here, uh, they'll start um, packaging everything to go, to make it to go containers, bag them up, and then you'll see everything set up outside for some people. Uh, if some, you're welcome to come in and grab your food and go, or if you're still worried about the pandemic or if you don't want to wear a mask inside, we'll deliver the meal to you in your car. So in, a, in about an hour and a half, two hours, you're going to see a lot of activity Everybody's setting up and everybody's got a job to do. Someone's going to take care of the chicken, the pasta, put the pudding in, box everything up, put them in a bag outside in the church hall, set up 200 bags. Uh, Jeanette and others will make sure that everything is hunky-dory and then we'll be ready for the guests at 3.30. And the guests, so, sometimes we're a few minutes late, but the, the guests are more, more than patient. So. Hopefully nobody goes hungry. We do the best we can. We have some very nice donors. Uh, some donate every month. Uh, we have a collection plate outside if somebody wants to give a few dollars for the meal. So that goes a long way. We also have some fundraisers on the side where we raise money. Uh, we also get a nice grant usually every year from the Archdiocese of Harford, which goes a long way. They've been very generous to us, and also we're a part of the Great Give, which is usually the first week in May. And people go online, that 48-hour span, and a lot of money is raised that way. And uh, the other thing we do is we have Plaza Diner and a couple of other partners. Uh, they're very kind to us. So maybe they'll donate the mashed potatoes, maybe they'll donate a thing of green beans, or cook carrots. So Plaza Diner and Dave Damien, uh, the owner, has been uh, most helpful. He, uh, he's been an excellent partner. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we'll buy this on our own through the donations. And then we'll cook it, uh, make it come to temperature, and, and then we will serve it. But Plaza Diner has been uh, most helpful over the years to, to Jim and us. We've created two options for our guests, and it's entirely up to them. They could either get their meal by a car, by car, drive up, request how many meals that they need, or they could come in. So we have both available. If they come into the hall, they are required to wear a mask, which most guests at this point seem to be okay with that, which is good. So they come over here to this area, and we take down stats for them. So we mark if they're a male or female, their age range, and what town they're coming from. And we do this for brand possibilities and who we service. Because we service more of the people, um, we service more than the city of Ansonia. We serve other towns as well, such as Seymour, Shelton, Derby, to just to name a few. So when they're, when they're done checking in, they come over here and they get a meal. 
This is Christine. Hello. This is Mark's fiance. She's counting bags. She's counting up to 200 bags so we can put the meals in the bags. If you follow me up here a little bit. This is Anita. Anita has been with us since we came to Assumption back in 2015. She's one of our more dedicated volunteers, very hard worker, and a great joy to be around with. Anita, say hello. Hi. Anita's Hi. doing flowers, and what that entails is we get a donation of flowers from Seymour's Stop and Shop for each meal. We bring them back here, we trim them, take all the bad flowers or leaves off, and then put them into a bunch and give them out to our guests. They've really become very enjoyable. Our guests have actually gone really crazy for them, if I can use that word, um, uh, wanting these flowers. But we do them, we get a pretty, today we got a decent amount. Yes, we do. We, we got a decent amount. Sometimes it's a little less, sometimes it's a little more. But Joanne, who is the florist up there, shout out to you, Joanne. Um, she makes it possible for us to give to our guests. So this is our giveaway table, or at least the start of the giveaway table that I was trying to explain before. We have different bread, pastries, food products. This varies from meal to meal. Our guests are allowed to take a certain amount of this stuff. We usually have limits, so we're fair, we try to be fair to everybody. There's some food here that was uh, nicely donated by a local church. And they're allowed to take so much of the food. Today we have some books, a few items of clothing, our, new, our latest newsletter, and a couple COVID tests. Over here where the table, no one's there, she's not here yet, will be where we were talking about Traveler on a Mission which has the incontinence products that we were referring to before. So she'll be set up over here. And if any of our volunteers brings any clothes in or something they want to get rid of, we'll put it on the giveaway table as long as we have room. Um, in the, that table right there, that will be where our parish nurse Maggie will be. And what Maggie does is she's here usually the second meal of each month, just like travel on a mission. And Maggie takes blood pressure screenings and she also does medical referrals. She's gotten people free mammograms and people who come in here have really gotten to know Maggie over the years. Maggie has a very gentle, loving way about her and our guests actually go see her. She doesn't have to get people to go to her table, like calling people, come on, get your blood pressure screening. You know, they come to her, which I think it's fabulous because unfortunately, you know, sometimes people don't take care of their health. The health is the last thing that they worry about. Well, with Maggie here, she makes sure that their blood pressure is good. And if there's anything that's not, seems not too right, she'll either recommend to see their, their um, doctor or get them the services that they need. So it's really nice to have her here when she is here. Aside from doing the two monthly meals back in about 2018, we started doing outreach programs. One of our outreach programs is an emergency food bank that we provide people with a bag or two of food just to get through again until maybe they receive their food stamps or until they receive their monthly check. It's a one-time use only, but we've helped over 50 people by doing this. We also have a community assistance program, which helps individuals with other needs, such as maybe they need gas, so we give them a gift card to stop and shop, or maybe they need something for their home. We've, we've provided uh, bed covers for people before, give them a gift card where their case manager would give them, um, uh, we give them case manager, excuse me, a gift card where it would be in turn, they would get a mattress cover. 
So the community assistance could be a gift card, whatever it is, up to $100, and that's a one-time deal only. What I'm excited to talk about to you today is we started a new program called Food to Kids in September. And in this program, it's a similar program that's all around the country. It may have different names, but we got our name from the Milford chapter who have shown us great support in starting this program. And basically what it is is we feed school-aged children, grades three to five, we give them non-perishable food for the weekend. Unfortunately, hunger is a problem in Connecticut as well as other parts of the country. But right here in Sonia, it's pretty bad. So by providing these meals to kids, we provide them with easy to prepare meals or, eat or, or snacks for the weekend where they wouldn't have enough food or they wouldn't have no food at all. We pack these bags, they're about four pounds each. We give it to a school counselor on Thursday morning. He then distributes to the neediest children in the school. So we don't know the children, we don't know what they look like, we don't know their names. We started doing 12 in September, we're up to 24 now a week. We've doubled the size in less than five months. We're really excited about this program because we really see the impact it has on kids. Kids with, as well as adults without food can't concentrate, they can't do their homework or schoolwork. It's a really, uh, a, it's an epidemic. We want to increase these food to kids meals in the future. And we hope to do that by getting people to sponsor them for a year, for a week, to buy certain items off our lists, that type of stuff. But we feel good because we're, we're making a difference with kids. Kids were always, um, it was always difficult to get kids to come to our meals for whatever reason. Mom and dad were working, mom and dad didn't want to come to the meal. You know, a kid can't drive himself here or possibly even walk here, a young kid. So this way, we know we're helping the kids in the community by doing this. It's at a local school here in Estonia that we're doing it. And we'll continue to do it as much as we can. Um, we usually do five packings, I'm sorry, up to eight packings, which is approximately four packings a year we've, we've, we've come out. So our next packing is in, actually this, this upcoming week, we have another packing and that should get us through the school year. But if you want more information, please call one of those numbers or go on Master's Table and email us at info at masterstablect.gmail.com and we'll get back with you and, and um, see what you can do for us. So that just uh, can kind of concludes what we do here. So there's a lot of different components to making these uh, meals work. And you, as you could well imagine, it takes uh, a lot of manpower to do it as well. You can find more information by two ways. You can call 203-732-7700. excuse me, 203-732-7792 or 203-685 Four four two eight. You can also look us up on the web at masterstablemeals.org. If you'd like to donate, you can donate online. I'm, uh, there's a spot for it on our website, or you may address the envelope to Master's Table, P.O. Box 175, in Sonia, Connecticut, 06401. The donations will go to the meals that we serve, and our other outreach programs. Uh, people always ask how they can help us, um, besides financially. We, can use, we always can use more volunteers, either for the packing of the food to kids, which makes a great family thing, because you could bring your young kids, and you could do it as a team. 
Also, we're looking for certain people who who share our passion and our joy of helping others, making a difference in our community. So we're looking for anybody who might be interested in joining our board um, as, a, as a board member. We meet monthly to discuss a wide range of uh, things. We have an agenda. We have a chairperson who leads our group. Um, so we're always looking for people with experience, any ties to the community, anybody who wants to give back. Um, we're always looking for those type of people. You know, the volunteers that we have now, the board people we have now, these people are here because they care. They care about the community, they care about people. They share our vision, they share our passion. Anita, Mark, Christine, whoever it may be, they could be somewhere else today, but they're not, they're here. They're making a meal, they're making the flowers look beautiful. I mean, if I could tell you the stories about the flowers and how people have said they make their significant other or their mom so happy when they get those flowers, it's unbelievable. And it's just flowers, you know, but, but it puts a smile on someone's face. And that's what it's all about, making people feel good. And, and, and it makes us feel good. They bring us the joy, our guests, you know, not so much we're bringing joy to them, they bring it to us because we continue to do it from our hearts and for the love of them and the love of doing what we're doing. So um, I just want to thank everybody that has helped Master's Table over the years financially or helped out or given to us. Thank you so much. We're going on 12 years doing this. Hi, my name is Stephen Pine, and I guess, I guess I'm the treasurer in training of, uh, of Master's Table. Okay. Um, uh, uh, I was brought, actually recommended for, for the board of directors by my sister-in-law, uh, uh, Lisa Herbert, who's the, um, uh, uh, the secretary, and she'd asked me if I would be interested in, in um, uh, getting involved with Master's Table. And I'm retired, so I, I was looking for something to do to, to give back to the community. And, um, uh, and she was telling me about Master's Table, and then I met Jim and spoke to him. And I decided that, that Master's Table was a very good cause and was right in the sort of thing that I was looking to do. And um, uh, uh, so um, uh, and, well, what we do is um, uh, uh, we, we feed people that have food insecurity. And it's all part of what I think is my, one of my personal philosophies about, which is, um, uh, uh, which is uh, healing the world, which, which is a Jewish concept, uh, and, um, uh, uh, and uh, obviously not just a Jewish concept, uh, but it's a concept of my synagogue, and uh, so I'm um, uh, healing the world at Tikkun Olum, and uh, I like to do these things locally. Uh, yeah, there are big things that can be done in the world, and they should be done too, but the, the local stuff is, is important too. You, you don't want to forget this. Uh, you, you don't want to forget, and food insecurity is not a little thing, but you don't want to forget the local, the local stuff. So um, uh, that's some, uh, one of the reasons I got in, in, involved with Master Sables, because we're helping out people locally. It's just a local organization, uh, local volunteers, and, uh, we, and but we have a big effect on the community. So I, um, uh, uh, I think it's a very good thing to do. And we're all chipping and do volunteer work, so <laughs> right now I'm folding flyers. <laughs> We belong to Valley Council, which is part of the nonprofits um, in this valley area. We also have a few um, monthly donors from this area um, that give to us monthly, um, which we're very happy and thankful for that. We're always looking for new donors. Can I say that? Is that okay? We're always looking for donors either for our Food to Kids program or for our meals in general. Um, one of the things is nice, it, one of our biggest obstacles by doing the meals here is we don't have the space. So sometimes when people give us stuff, we have to turn it over right away. Most notably clothes. People would give us clothes and we used to have a clothing bank, but it got to be a problem with space. So now if people donate clothes, I always tell them they could donate it if it doesn't go after one or two meals, we have a church 
that has a clothing bin which recycles the clothes and we're able to get the proceeds from that. So before we were telling people, please don't bring us any spotty, dirty, ripped clothes. Now it's like, well, if they bring them, we'll just bring them up to the church and have them recycled. And then we'll get um, money from, their, uh, from that. So that's a, that's a good thing too. Our next meal after this one is March 12th. It's a Sunday. It's our annual St. Patrick's Day corned beef and cabbage dinner. And then we resume going back to two meals. One is on um, Palm Sunday and one is on the week after Easter. That's in April. Anything that's new that's happening, we do have a Facebook account. Like us on Facebook. We, like, we enjoy those likes. We want to build up those likes. Um, we're hoping that we can do something this year, but it's in, it's in the very beginning stages, so I don't want to say too much of a possible fundraiser. Um, but we'll have to see how, how, how it plays out. It's, it's, it's been a busy year for Master's Table. Last year we, we did really good and we continue to do well, and we're happy to see that. Hi, my name is Tom Cabello. I'm here at the Master's Table. I volunteer here with my wife. And we've been doing this for maybe for like about two years and we just find that it's a worthwhile cause and basically we do various jobs here either packing lunches or going out into the parking lot and handing the meals out to the people who are waiting in line in their cars and other times maybe we'll just be wrapping um, silverware so that way they have silverware for the next um, meal and it is a cause worthwhile to contribute to um, I'm sure if you just look online master's tables you'll be able to see where you can donate All right, thank you chicken is up to temperature after 25 minutes so now the next step in the process is we're going to hit this with some red sauce to make it look good. And then we'll put it in this warmer. Uh, Vinny had the idea. Uh, we bought this warmer here um, because there's only so much oven space we have. So what we're going to do is we're going to top this off with some red Don Pepino sauce. We're going to put it in the warmer and it can stay there until the, until the volunteers come in and help uh, box the stuff up. So we're going to just do a little bit of this sauce. You know, for a can, Don Pepino is a, is a really good sauce. So we're going to just top with no cheese, just a little red sauce. We're not going to go overboard and we're going to save some time. And the thing is, we're serving 200 meals, but we ended up with 210 pieces of chicken because the last box had 35 pieces in it and it doesn't make sense just to hold back 10 pieces of chicken and put it in the freezer. So. Something tells me um, they're either going to be used or if somebody has a shut-in, they can take the extras to the shut-in and uh, so they will not go to waste. Nothing will ever go to waste. If push comes to shove, uh, we, we can always donate it to Spooner House or, or some other shelter, but nothing will be thrown in the garbage. Uh, Vinny has a very, very adamant about don't waste food. You know, nothing's going to go to waste and nobody's going to go hungry. And, and the good news is, you know, you know we, we live in a society that's a very self-centered. Everything's about me, 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 I, I, I. And it's easy to get wrapped up in your own life. So that's why we really appreciate the volunteers giving up their Sundays to come here because there's no way that the three of us can do this by ourselves. Uh, look how long it takes for the two ladies to package the pudding and what do you see when everybody has to bag the stuff up and you don't want to keep the guests waiting. Some of them have been waiting outside for three hours figuring that they're going to be uh, not served if they run out of food, if we run out of food. So it takes a lot off our plate, no pun intended, when the volunteers give up a Sunday, regardless of weather or time of year, uh, to, to, to help our organization. So this looks good. Uh, we're going to Chris, you can, you're a little stronger than me. Well, we're going to put this in the warmer, and then it can stay there. It's not going to cook. It's going to just keep everything warm. 
until about 2.30, uh, the ladies will come in and they'll, they'll start packaging everything up, put them in a bag, and then we'll be ready to go.